Right, so we've got the board flipped up. Um, the old transformer had one of these uh, Molex connectors on it. I think it's Molex. <clears throat> Whereas the new one's just uh, fly leads. So we're going to forget about that connector. They're not great for high current lines like those green wires with the heater. It's pretty low heater current on this model, so it hasn't presented any problems, but um, but we may as well just uh, remove the connector, remove the header from the board, which is, there's the bottom of the pins there. We're going to desolder them. You can see the two fat heater traces going off there. Uh, and just hardwire the wires directly to the board after trimming them to length with a little bit, little bit spare, a little bit of flex on them, um, which will make removing the board easier in the future if anything else goes wrong. Right, so we've uh, applied a little bit more solder just to get some flux on the joins there. We've got the, uh, the boffer up and running for some fume extraction and we'll uh, desolder all these pins on the header. Give it a fair bit of heat. Very fun manoeuvring this uh, this board. So we'll tilt the chassis forwards. Should be able to remove that header pretty easily now. To give it a bit of a wiggle. There she is. So just an update on the uh, DC2 Mesa Boogie. I've got the new uh, transformer installed for 240 volt mains. We've I realised that there's actually a, a little resistor hiding down there somewhere. There it is. That is the dropper for the neon indicator on the front to suit 240 volts. Normally that's straight. It must have an internal resistor for current uh, limiting on uh, 100 to 120 volts but for 240 it's got an extra resistor to drop it down a bit. Uh, when I removed the PCB I don't know if just disturbing that reverb pot uh, the clean channel reverb died completely and the wiper was open circuit on that pot. Um, I dismantled it and gave it a clean and retention and it came good so I'm putting that one back in uh, what else have we done? We did various voicing changes. The main brief was to make the drive channel uh, get rid of some treble filtering, get rid of the low pass filters throughout the circuit before the distortion stage so that there was some character of the guitar actually retained, which would be nice. Uh, I think we've achieved that without getting rid of that smooth messer sort of Rolled off top end, not not the bitey British sound that uh, that we're used to hearing out of EL84 amps. There's my phone, right on cue. So where were we? Uh, yeah, so I was discussing the voicing changes, uh, which I think we've we've achieved. Um, it still sounds like a messer. It just doesn't have complete lack of detail from your guitar before the distortion stage so it actually allows the character of your guitar to, to come through the overdrive channel. The clean channel sounded pretty good how it was um, so we've more or less left that alone. A few little tweaks but um, the biggest thing is the transformer. Now the issue is, oh the bias too, I uh, tweaked the, the bias values in there and of course some of the pads came off because Mesa Mesa solder pads are ridiculous. Look at there's basically no copper top and bottom. It's just a tube. Um, so any heat and the pads just disappear. 
uh, they're, they're just not not a professionally made PCB really I mean the layout and the the execution leaves a lot to be desired uh, we upgraded the screen grid resistors to uh, 1.5k to make the uh, the high voltages and the, the high dissipation of this amp a little bit easier on the EL84s. Now the voltages across the board were all in spec with the new transformer except for the HT voltage, hey, the most important one. So we've ended up, I took this down to 70%, uh, so that was like 20 milliamps per valve at uh well w with the new voltages um that was around 430 volts which is well well above an el84's uh, maximum allowable voltage now this this uh amp specifies on the schematic 400 volts on the plates which is already 100 volts above the spec spec sheet but so many other amps do it and it's sort of it's just become like a standard now <laughs> You run a EL84s, you flog them like rented mules. So all the amp manufacturers seem to do that and for some reason. Um, I don't think there's any real need for it tone-wise. Uh, some may argue that, but I'd rather not short out tubes <laughs> in my amps. So anyway, when I had the dissipation at 20 millivolts, oh, uh, sorry, that's reading across the one, air, uh, one ohm cathode resistor when I had 20 milliamps per valve it was sitting at 430 volts which is pretty hectic and 435 uh, so I brought the dissipation back up to around what it was beforehand which is about 106 105 ish percent uh, at about 30 32 milli volts per valve and it's dragged HT down to below 410 volts so it's closer at least to the, the schematic uh, quoted voltages um, it's still a bit high for comfort but we might be able to it's still got the original valves in there <clears throat> if it presents issues in the future uh, we might be able to put some Softec EL84Ms in there and their, their data sheet actually specs maximum 400 so we're a lot closer to that so we're going to see how it goes with the stock valves uh, sitting at just over 400 um, and we're going to uh, put it back in the box, give it a clean up and put it back together, give it back to the customer and see what he reckons tone wise. It's a bit awkward at the moment. We can't uh, sit down in the shop and try it out and have a feel um, like we normally do because of COVID. Uh, we're actually under lockdown, have been since mid-June and probably will for the rest of the year. So he's going to have to take it home with him and, and have a feel and, and get back in touch with me if he wants any further changes done but I think he should be reasonably happy with how it is right so here we've got it uh, everything 12 o'clock pretty much except for the output level that's on the rhythm channel just for reference to the previous uh, previous clip where we tried it out tried on the lead It's still sounding pretty dark there, but with everything 12 o'clock, uh, we'll turn the gain down a touch, just show what the uh, tone sounds like when it's uh, when it's a bit cleaner. Bring the treble up a little. comes to life when you take a bit of mid out and bring the bass up you can hear that it's a strat now you sort of couldn't before That's way more usable. Bring the reverb up. Back 
tracks with rhythm. Bit of a level level difference there. Uh, reverb working again now after repairing that that pot we'll go flat out with a gain on the clean channel Again, you can use just the one channel and now it's cleaned up a little bit it's not as farty and most importantly it's not anywhere near as much noise as it was before as well I think that's a much more usable tone now on both channels uh, so we're gonna leave it at that and see what the customer reckons and go from there or hopefully he's happy with it uh, thanks for following along and we'll go on to the next one which is that uh, triple rectifier solo head that caught fire <laughs> more mess of fun yay yeah, thanks for watching champions take it easy